Hi students, today we're going to read The Three Little Pigs. This version was written by Paul Galdon. We're going to pay careful attention to the characters, the setting, the problem, the solution, which is how they fixed the problem, and the beginning, the middle, and the end. We want to pay careful attention so that we can tell the story again without having to read the book. If we listen closely enough, you could tell me the whole story just by looking at the pictures. That's one way to read a book. Get very familiar with it. Pay careful attention. Read it a couple of times and you'll be able to do that. The Three Little Pigs by Cal Paul Galdon. Once upon a time, there was an old sow with three little pigs. She had no money to keep them, so she sent them off to seek their fortunes. Oh, so it's their mom. And she's sad. The first little pig met a man with a bundle of straw and said to him, Please, man, give me that straw to build me a house. So the man did, and the little pig built his house with it. Along came a wolf. He knocked at the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, said the little pig, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. So the wolf huffed, and he puffed, and he blew the house in, and he ate up the first little pig. The second little pig met a man with a bundle of sticks and said, Please, man, give me those sticks to build me a house. So the man did, and the little pig built his house with them. Then along came the wolf and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. So he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed. And at last he blew the house in and he ate up the second little pig. The third little pig met a man with a load of bricks and said, Please, man, give me those bricks to build me a house. So the man did, and the little pig built his house with them. Soon the same wolf came along and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff. And I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. Well, he huffed and he puffed, and he huffed and he puffed, and he huffed and he puffed, but he could not blow the house in. At last, the wolf stopped, stopped huffing and puffing and said, Little pig, I know where there is a nice field of turnips. Where, said the little pig. On Mr. Smith's farm, said the wolf. I will come for you tomorrow morning. We will go together and get some turnips for dinner. Very well, said the little pig. What time will you come? Oh, at six o'clock, said the wolf. Well, the little pig got up at five. He went to Mr. Smith's farm, got the turnips before the wolf came to his house. Little pig, are you ready? asked the wolf. The little pig said, Ready? I've been and come again, and I got a nice pot full of turnips for my dinner. And so the wolf tried to trick him. Did the pig get fooled? No. The wolf was very angry, but then he thought of another way to get the little pig, so he said, Little pig, I know where there is a nice apple tree. Where? said the pig. Down at Merry Garden, replied the wolf. 
I will come for you at five o'clock tomorrow morning and we will get some apples. What do you think the little pig will do? Well, the little pig got up the next morning at four o'clock and went off for the apples. He wanted to get back home before the wolf came, but it was a long way to Merry Garden and then he had to climb the tree. Just as he was climbing back down with his basket full of apples, he saw the wolf coming. Little pig, the wolf said, you got here before me. Are the apples nice? Yes, very, said the little pig. I will throw one down to you. And he threw the apple as far as he could throw. While the wolf ran to pick it up, the little pig jumped down and ran home. The, little, the next day, the wolf came again and said to the little pig, Little pig, there is a fair at Shanklin this afternoon. Would you like to go? Oh, yes, said the little pig. When will you come to get me? At three, said the wolf. What do you think the little pig will do? Well, when the wolf asked him to go get turnips, he said he would come at six. And the little pig left at five. When the wolf said that they should go get apples and he would come at five, the little pig got up at four. Now the wolf wants to go to the fair at three. Well, the little pig went off at two o'clock and bought a butter churn at the fair. He was going home with it when he saw the wolf coming. The little pig jumped into the butter churn to hide. This is a butter churn. It's like a big barrel or a cylinder and you can make butter inside of it. Obviously, he fits inside of it too. I can see that from the pictures. The churn fell over and rolled down the hill with the little pig in it. This frightened the wolf so much that he turned and ran home. Later, the wolf went to the little pig's house and told him what had happened. A great round thing came rolling down the hill right at me, the wolf said. Ha! I frightened you then, said the little pig. I went to the fair and bought a butter churn. When I saw you, I got into it and rolled down the hill. Well, the wolf was very angry indeed. I'm going to climb down your chimney and eat you up, he said. When the little pig heard the wolf on the roof, He hung a pot full of water in the fireplace. Then he built a blazing fire. And just as the wolf was coming down the chimney, the little pig took the cover off the pot and fell, and in fell the wolf. The little pig quickly put the cover on again, boiled up the wolf, and ate him for supper. And the little pig lived happily ever afterward. Who were the characters in this book? Mm -hmm. We have three little pigs and we have the wolf. What's the problem in this book? The wolf wants to eat the little pig, doesn't he? What does the pig do to make a solution to fix that problem so that he doesn't get eaten? How does the pig handle the problem? He doesn't let that fox or the, the wolf trick him, does he? No, he keeps getting up one hour earlier to go to those places. What are some of the places, some of the settings that we saw in this book. We can use the pictures to help us retell the settings. So we know that first the mama pig had to say goodbye. And it kind of looks like a farm. So the three pigs left that farm area. And we're outside here. We know that the first pig built a house full of straw. Was it strong enough? Nope.
That second pig had built a house full of sticks. Was it strong enough? Nope. nope, it wasn't. And the third pig, what did he build his house out of? Bricks. And when the wolf tried to blow it down, could he? No. He said, well, let's go to a turnip farm. So that was the setting. And he said, oh, well, I know where there's an apple tree at Mary Garden. So that was a setting. The apple tree. And he said, oh, how about the fair? So the fair becomes a setting. Remember, a setting is a place. And then we're back at the pig's brick house. Right? So it does have lots of different settings. Do you think that you can retell this story? I hope so. Don't forget some of the words we hear lots and lots like, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the pigs always say, no, no, not by the hair on my chitty chin chin. Thank you for reading this book with me. I hope you have fun telling it to your mom, your dad, your grandparents, aunts and uncles, brothers and sisters. It's good to retell stories.